pages. Right, it's, right. It's easier to look at lines on a piece of paper than to try and describe why they're there. Because I can understand it when I'm looking at it, but then I try to explain it, and it all falls apart. Oh, well. I tell you what. Let's go ahead. Let's run the show and uh, come back, and we'll we'll discuss a little bit more. Sound good? The views and opinions expressed within the video content found on the Indie Comics Network are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the Indie Comics Network or its sponsors. But anyway, so we okay, so all right. So you have the rule of thirds, blah blah blah. The rule of thirds tells you basically, oh hey everybody, welcome of course to Art Style Kamikaze again. I'm Steve Michael Lending, independent artist. Uh the two-time failed host on this show. How are you doing? What's up, Mike? Mike's in the chat saying, Hell yeah, it's Art Style Kamikaze. We'll, we'll find out. We'll see what kind of show this turns out to be. So I thought, okay, so Jaden, go ahead. If you want to introduce yourself, go right ahead. What? See, she doesn't have the green screen, so she's able to wear her girl cap. Wear my girl hat. That's right. That's, now I'm you're all so styling. Proud. You know, uh, the fact that, that girl is such considered such a cute uh, creature or character it's now, okay. it's contrary. Oh, is it? It's very contrary. Because I think he's. I think he's cute. Right? Like, although I will say his most popular form in the dog suit, much uglier, much uglier than just his robot. I think he's way cuter without it. I don't know why that one didn't go as viral as the dog did. Because it's a dog. Right. You know, it's a dog. That's all. Gur is evil. That's right. Gur is evil. <laughs> yes, 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 my lord. <laughs> Absolutely. So anyway, so compositions. We we're going to some compositions, and one thing that you're taught. Is uh, right off the bat is um, the rule of thirds in the composition, which uh, we'll probably go over because we're going to look at Lupus's book of creative illustration. He kind of goes over some composition and stuff. And the thing about it is, is, huh? Of, uh, of Lewis, Andrew, Andrew Lewis. I get I get simple names messed up. I was telling Chad this today. I said. Uh, I get simple names like yeah. Tim and Tom, Bob and Bill, Andrew and Anthony, uh, those type of things, you Chris know. And Puss and Boots, what? I said Chris. Chris and Crips, you know, Crips, Crips, what? Oh, this is the Bloods show. <laughs> oh wow! Don't be putting them. Don't be putting the feels out there. So anyway, I thought we'd go over a little bit of his stuff. We've got some stuff from Ethanton Brothers. That kind of give us an idea of unique compositions to help us really, uh, you know, do art goodly. Do art goodly, right? What's the, you know, these kind of things will help people think that you know what you're doing. Exactly, make it look like you have an idea of when you started the art thing. The art thing. Well, you know, and I thought about trying to, you know, maybe we'll, we'll put some stuff on paper. We'll use some stick figures or whatever the case is, because there's not going to be much I can do live. Otherwise, they're really, really going to be bored. Art Crumbs, what's happening? Art Crumbs says, hey -o. hey -o, Art Crumbs. Welcome hey. to Art Style Kamikaze. And like I said, so what we'll do is we'll go over some. I'm not going to sit here and read all of Loomis's dribble, I mean, stuff. I mean, uh, intelligent uh, paragraphs about what it is to be co composition. But this is being taken from Creative Illustration, which is a book that is out there in the sphere of art. Art sphere, right? <laughs> The art sphere. It's very, it's very art style. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm going to totally bother you with that, huh? No, I thought we 
we've been done. No, we are never done with our do stuff. Entire time. It's all our stuff. stuff. All right, our crumbs it's is fault, working fault. on some manga pages while I listen. Oh, excellent. You know what? Here's the thing. So I got those shonen jumps right, and I went back the next day and got more mm -hmm. from when, from what we did last week. And we're saying he's never going back to that bookstore. No, they still have some, so I probably will go back to that bookstore. But what's interesting is, so I'm looking at a certain um, manga that's in, <laughs> that's in uh, the Shonen Jump. And some of the comp compositions in those uh, those panels for that certain manga is uh, is really, it really stands out. Well, you know, as, as well as I do, you watch the anime. We've talked about some of the drastic compositions that are made, you know, that are there. In so the thing that you were talking about that you are speaking of. Right. I'm I not not anything in particular. No, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Anyway, so let's go, let's look, let's see. Let's pull this down and uh let's talk about some weird, some unique compositions. So of course, you know, we have over line is proportion with imagination. Can you construct a head in any pose, a plan head construction? And of course, you know, that's one thing Loomis is really known for. It's, it's got a box to kind of understand head construction. Now there's a there's you know um what's his name? Uh Rodgan? Rod Rodgan? Rod yeah, I talked yeah, right. He he does a lot of tutorials every freaking day. The guy has something oh, yeah. new. Uh which is great. But she doesn't say, but he doesn't like the Loomis method. He does it. He does not. Uh, and Loomis method is, you know, kind of a box and cubes and stuff like that. I've used so, that method for years. I've only recently stopped using it. Well, you, you kind of progress, right? And I, and he, I think he his deal was you couldn't understand the Loomis method unless you had some skill in it already. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think sometimes some of us are just square. And that's how we look at it. I'm a square person. I'm not a round person. I'm a square. Well, I am a round it's person, but I'm not a square person. The same person. construction for every single head you do because heads are all built different. Like there's a basics, but usually like width and length and stuff like that is going to vary. It's hard to keep it in the same box. Well, just like any other tutorial, the thing about this is that you have to. It, it's it's a construction that starts at the very basics, so that you understand and put and put into your head how it works, how to think when you're drawing it. Is that a segue? Huh? Is that a segue? No, not really. I've tried to get over here to... Uh... Let's see. Our crumb says this episode is perfect to help me. I need to learn composition better. I, I, I think that's one thing that's always the case. Even better. Is, is, yeah, and that's... To be a student of composition, I think, is eternal. Oh, yeah. Or infinite, infinite well, <laughs> eternal. Because infinity is you've always were eternal is or eternal is anyway. We're gonna this is something for, you're forever. gonna do it forever, forever, ever. So line. So we see here line produces formal design. You got a whole bunch of designs that I can never do in my my imagination or whatever it's the case. Those adult coloring books. It's just a bunch it, of shapes. It does right. They, 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 they looked at Creative Illustration. Hey, say, those would make some really great adult coloring books. But you know, it always it always bothers me when you hear about adult coloring books because I feel like that actually indicates something totally different. Yeah, it's never sounded right. Adult oh. relaxation, relaxation coloring books? I don't know. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's like, it's rated triple X. Anyway. Oh. Uh, Art Crow says, for real, if you stop learning, you stop growing. And that's just the sad thing about it, is you want to keep learning. It is. So line produces informal design. And we see with a lot of stuff, you have arcs interlaced, uh, combining horizontals and perpendiculars with curves. And my head's exploding just looking at this stuff, right? Um, There's a lot happening. Huh? There's a lot happening. Yeah. Uh, oblique lines interlaced. Uh, overlapping ovals, overlapping circles, overlapping squares. That you know, I was I can't remember what it was. It was oh, it was a murder documentary, and it was they kept the way that they kept composing the shot was like it was a two story house. So, but you caught like the first roof, first floor roof. And then the other roof kind of like behind it in this in this scene or whatever the case is. And I thought 
what an amazing way to have an establishing shot. And a, and a, whoever did that frame needs a lot of res, is a in lot of respect. Murder documentary? Yeah, in a murder documentary. What a time to get artsy. Uh, it was a. Uh, uh, I think it was um, evil. Evil lives, lives here. Evil lives here. Right. Which, but it's, but that's the thing. Well, here's the deal. Why you go? Oh, a murder documentary. That's a weird place to find composition. Absolutely not. Because here's the deal. They're trying to give you this spooky environment. They're trying to give you this feel of. They want you inside the terror of. But what these people experience is, and the subject that they're talking about. So they're trying to hit those compositions in a certain way. For instance, it was a normal place. It was a normal house, a happy household. They had no idea. So first you get you get the neighborhood and the nice peak couple walking the dog and the kids playing out in the yard. And the next shot is the side of the house. It's just sharp, 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 right? Yeah, it's just sharp, 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 you know, like stabbing. And that's how they kind of get you right there. Yeah, see? Exactly. Never, never underestimate the artistic integrity of any media, unless it comes from Disney now. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, and with that, overlapping triangles, overlapping, what is that word? It says, it's R-A-D-I-I. Rabi, Rabi, I don't know. I don't know. This, it's spider webs is what it looks like to me, right? Right here. Uh, so overlapping wavy parallels, overlapping angles, overlapping spirals, overlapping rectangles, horizontals, and perpendiculars. Can you imagine designing pieces on this grounds alone here? No. No, that would be insane. Insane. So over, so he kind of shows you overlapping areas, the first principle of co composition. The principle of overlapping areas, forms, and contours is the basis of all pictorial creation. Since line is our first means of defining these, then linear arrangement becomes our first consideration. There are many ways to go about it. So, so okay, so we see overlapping lines, which gives us a, a, a sense of depth, right? Yeah, third dimension. How hard do you find it to use overlapping lines? Pretty hard. Well, especially because I'm really weird about tangents. Yeah. And oh my god, I just every time I go over anything, I just start noticing a whole bunch of tangents. Tangents are, are ways that lines kind of that are two different objects intersect, and it looks like and it makes it look like one object. Yeah, and that's obviously that makes it look flatter. You know that happens a lot in compositional and, and when you're composing a comic book. Really? It, it really does, and and when you do a sequential art, the panels don't have to touch, the lines don't have to touch, but sometimes. If you know how to do it, you can actually manipulate that, which is really kind of funny, right? Because you can manipulate something that's usually frowned upon, but you can manipulate something like that into your compositions. I guess that can make it look more unsettling. It can make it look more unsettling. You can actually join together two panels to make it feel like a, 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 a yeah, like it's a filled piece, but yet in different scenes, uh, things like that. And so it's kind of like thinking like that, kind of thinking outside the box. And using, okay. Tangents are our friends. I, well, there you go. Here's the thing: tangents are not your friends per se. Although, if we talked about the Keep way we, oh, like like we were doing a couple weeks ago with the shapes and everything, sure, they're friends like that. The ones you beat around, yeah, and stretch, and knock, and everything else. Really tangents, bad, but tangents can be your friends as long as you understand when not to use them. Yeah. Right, uh, and something I would not suggest that you consistently do. In that, you know, I hope so. I hope not. I can't no. speak English. So, but overlapping lines. So that's what you have to watch for. Is this a good uh, tangents? Okay. So you've heard of forced perspective, mm -hmm. and that's where this really comes into into play, right? The forced perspective, like. For instance, like that first one right here, you got the broccoli and bowl, and you got the eggs, and you got the frying pan, and you got the this, and you got that, and you're just putting all this together, and you don't want to have a tangent, but it's all overlapping lines. Do you think they put it on the grid? Maybe because it's on tiles, but I'm telling you in that next panel that, well, you have those overlapping, but I bet you it wasn't on the grid. Why? Because it doesn't need to be. Doesn't? No. Because here's the deal. You have... If you, as long as you have a sense of perspective, you can have a forced perspective that that tree is in front of that bush that's behind it, right? 
Yes. Yes. I am sort of understanding. Okay. Uh, for instance, let's say. Well, you see, Timmy. Um, oh, I'm totally going to clip dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> now that I just said that. Oh, you never seen? Any, oh, come on. You remember dinosaurs where something happens. What's this, Professor? And uh, and the professor ends up blowing Timmy up. And he goes over, oh, we're going to need another Timmy. I'm totally going to do that to you. So going to do that to you. <laughs> hey, by, well, by the way, if you are watching right now, I'd just like to let you know, we are on the independencecommentnetwork.com. If you're watching on Facebook uh, or any other place, come over to YouTube because that's the best place that we can see you and interact with us in the chat. Because as we know, it is interactive. It's interactive? You son of a bitch. <laughs> and, of course, like, share, subscribe, tell the neighbor everything that you know about the independence. Like if you don't like Correct. this show, that's okay. We've got plenty of shows, and I'm sure you're going to find one that's going to be right for you. So, with that, we'll continue on. This one isn't right for anybody. You are on this show. Mm -hmm. You know that, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's your name. That's on it, too. <laughs> yeah, but I have, like, a whole bunch of shows. I got another show coming out Thursday with Chad. Hell, we got the show coming out when we're watching the Fantastic Four 1994 version coming up Wednesday right here. That's right. We're going to Mystery Science Theater this bitch. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, with that, so here, here's the deal. I also hate that show, by the way. Uh, it's all, it's published. That Facebook user? Unfortunately, we don't know who you are. Come over to YouTube so we can see who you are. And it's like, oh, girl hat. That's yes. right. Absolutely. Like personally, thank you for being awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so with the overlapping, okay. Can you tell that there's depth in that second piece with the trees? Why? What is making the perception of depth? Well, let's let's zoom in. Well, let's zoom in. Okay. Right, all the stuff in the foreground. How do we know that there's a foreground? Because it's stuff that is not that big. Okay, it's overlapping, mm -hmm. right? This The tree's coming out right here, overlapping that, right? Yeah. So we could, so that we know that if that tree is behind that bush, would we see the, the tree leaning over? No, the bush would be in front, yeah. right? So we see, like, just the subtlety of this edge right here. That shows us that whatever's behind that edge is in a distance, or... Right? And look, all the way back here, we can see in small doses all those little overlapping lines. We even get a feel that those hills are layered away. Right? So overlapping lines in the area is the first principle of composition. Uh, this is probably this is probably on a grid, but we can see here because of the overlapping uh, the overlapping buildings that this obviously is in front of this building way back here. Yeah. If not, that's a really tiny building next to it. Exactly, right? And it just doesn't you come out, because right? because things are smaller or bigger than they usually would be. So with that, I'll see this composition right here with the house. I love this because I feel like there's not, okay, It's very, these are very loose uh, compositions. I think he threw these together like yeah, that probably. right, uh, considering he, he was uh, a master of what he was doing. So, but I love the fact that we have the fence here, and it just layers it. Just okay. So what you have is two tri. You have a triangle, a big triangle in the back, two 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 rectangles in the front, and a circle, right? And just layering those right there has helped create a depth, and and has given it an atmosphere of what he's going for. Yeah. It, a, an atmosphere of being in that. Just like, for instance, in the next one, we have the umbrella. And never fail to re remember that you're tricking your, your you're a magician. Yeah. As an artist, you're a magician. You're full and you're everything. tricking your, your, the consumer, the person consuming right. your art. Because this is all on a flat surface. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. Make it look so like you're enough. tricking them into seeing things. Seeing. Seeing. Yes. Like a hallucination. Uh, well, it's a you hit. You make them schizophrenic. <laughs> if you're lucky. that mean, If you're if lucky you're enough lucky. that your art can cause somebody to have schizophrenia, 
That would be sick. I'm telling Schizophrenia, you. Schizophrenia, dude. Think about it. It's deeper than that. Schizophrenia? Really do realize. Did you just come up? That is so art style. Ah, <laughs> totally ruined that nope. shit for you. Yeah. Okay, so with that. Uh, I'm not going to talk the entire rest of the stream. What I love, okay, so, but it, what, what gets me is you can see in these three a, a, a totally drastic use of lines that he uses here, right? The first one is just basic shapes. Shapes. Yes. Just basic shapes. I'll only talk when I'm Yes, Miss Penny. It's basic shapes. So it's just triangles, circles, rectangles, right? A couple of little odds and ends here that are a little bit more complicated. He even puts a freaking branch there. Is that branch in front of the fence? Is it behind the fence? It's behind the fence. Why? Because the fence is in front of it. That's a yes. <laughs> no, yes. but like, okay, you see the, the branch disappears behind the fence. But I think what's really interesting is what we get into with the lady in a snake charmer over here. And yes, folks, that is nudity. Just to let you know, that is nudity. Oh my God. That's right. We are TV, PG, and DYMX. Huh? Enhance. <laughs> right now. I'm waiting. Yes. Pants. Okay. Your head's in the way. Well, you can't do anything about it. Your head's just in the way. Yes. Okay. So, but look, she's got like snakes all over the floor, right? And I think those tiles that on that grid safe. helps helps us to understand the depth there. It's not safe. No. Why would you want to be naked or have a bunch of snakes? Sounds like a bad time. Well, she looks like she's dancing naked in front of some people. I'm thinking like this is kind of like a Eastern motif type of thing, right? Whatever. I guess that, I don't know. Maybe that's getting you canceled. Well, I saw the boots. I'm happy. Move on now. Really? They're mid. Ah, golly. So using the first function of line for itself for composition. Now, what's funny is I mentioned this earlier on Sketchy Saturday about how you always hear about the rule of thirds, but there's other ways to comp compose things. Rule of thirds should be the general basics of how you understand composition. Right? And then never use it again when you figured it out because it sucks. It, it doesn't suck because in all honesty, you could probably even apply the rule of thirds to these compositions yeah. at all times. But what we're trying to do cool. is this. While the rule of thirds is not done, what we are trying to do is open up our minds to see it a little bit more than just the grid style of the rule of thirds. You can make it squiggly. You can make it squiggly. You can get we, silly with it. And we actually have the Etherington Brothers uh, tutorial that shows this as far as uh, kind of the two-line composition thing, right? So you have the first, you just have this line, the just squiggly line that just kind of goes, flows out, and it's all like, oh. And then, of course, it's like a hill, which is what he uses it for. It's like when you drop a hair on your phone screen. <laughs> yeah. Not that you would know, of course. Well, no, because you know what happens is people post that stuff on Facebook. Have you ever come across that? Oh, Where they're like, yeah. you, you, there's something there, and it's a hair or whatever, because they're trying to trick you. The right. They do that in yeah. ads all the time. I know, right? And I came across I, I think one you with a moving flea on it, and I kept like, get off, get off. I was about to throw my phone, and then I realized it was inside of the phone. Oh, you, oh, you were fooled by that? Shut up. Yes, <laughs> I was. Now shut up. Oh, wow. Who wouldn't, right? <laughs> William Pace. Camp of who? Sounds like work to me. <laughs> it is work. It's work to try to train yourself to see this. And some people have gotten it so naturally, I hate them. That's not naturally, whatever. They're going to be bad at that. other things that you probably are pretty good at. <sighs> I can't think of it, but I'm not going to say it live. Uh... What's interesting, okay, so what, and he, you see, even this, you have to think outside the, the oh, conventional. You almost said box, because grid, get it? To get it? To get it? He's throwing stuff at me. He's I looking am. for something else to throw. Oh, shoot. I'm going to break everything. Oh, my God. <laughs> don't you throw it. Anyways. You don't have a hat to protect you. Uh, I, don't, I don't have hair to protect me. Don't. Anyway, so, but what's interesting, look at the next two boxes, right? So you got the, you, okay, that's obviously the tree, the hill, and the hill. These oh, the lines don't that. always have to be box hills, right? Please tell me that's not what we're looking at. But then he sticks, like, okay, so there's, 
So don't look at the lines. Look at the negative space in between. Okay, negative space being if you don't you know, if you don't know, and that's okay. You don't know. It's so chaotic. Where is the? Uh, I guess the middle point would be where they cross, right? Invader Zim is in trouble. <laughs> uh, the this point right here, I don't think he's using it like that. I don't think he's using it in a sense, and I'm sure if we read it, he's probably not. Well, he's not using it in the sense of how we were looking at the three grid, right? When the lines connect, that's where you put something. No, this is just in itself. See, I was, this is what I was talking about, grids grimly. Say that again? Okay. The what? He did it, okay, he did the Guillermo del Toro Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon. What the fuck am I talking about? I, I got know. one piece on the brain and then I just kind of uh, infected yes, everything. These things are all infected. I don't know why. Anyway. <laughs> well, no, okay, so he did the Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio. Oh, yes. All right. It's got that, that weird... Uh, it, I'm trying to make sure I got his name right because God knows I can't get names right to save my life. Well, we've already been up Like Netta in there? Netta. My wife, Netta? Netta. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's Gris, embarrassing. Gris Grimley. His mom. Gris Grimley, which I was right. Gris Grimley is the one who designed that Pinocchio for Guillermo del Toro. Well, I'm not wild about that Pinocchio at all. Uh, the designs are have a uniqueness to them, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, what I saw, the what I noticed, what I ever first discovered Gris Grimley, which way would be on before Pinocchio came out. Um... Which made me want to see Pinocchio because it sure as hell wasn't Guillermo del Toro. Uh, okay, here's the thing about Guillermo. He's so hit and miss sometimes, but he does beautiful work when it's not trying to be fantasy, aside from with the exception of that being Pan's Labyrinth. He should do more like that. So complicated. It, it just goes to show you up and downs. Like his uh, Nightmare Alley, which doesn't really have a supernatural twist that was to it. Terrible? Yes, it doesn't have a supernatural twist to it, but it was beautifully done. I enjoyed the movie very much. Crimson Peak, or no? no yeah, Crimson Peak. Right yeah, Crimson Peak. Beautifully done film, boring movie. Uh, it, it had Tom Hiddleston's butt. So that's why I'm not watching it. I refuse to. That's Loki. Like I don't want to see him like that. You don't want to see a naked Loki? Yeah. I think a lot. I'm sure of people, a lot of people would. I'm not one. I'm not one of that majority. Sorry. But he used, but he understands. He does understand how things beautiful. Look at Pan's Labyrinth. I just don't understand some of the choices that he's made in some other things. Maybe we could ask him. Since you're watching no, Grimo, you can come on anytime. <laughs> he's a huge fan. Haven't you heard? <laughs> oh <laughs> no. Anyway, I think people. Love I am not hating on Guillermo del Toro because I think that would be for me to sit there and. Bash a famous director would be really stupid for one and two. <laughs> like, wait, I don't wait. feel like putting that kind of negative energy out there yeah. because only love, love sometimes. Love. I mean, he got Grizz Grimley to design Pinocchio. That's a brilliant move. That's a brilliant. Not to mention, if you've never seen That's the Devil's, nice movie. the Devil's Backbone, which was like his first movie, that was great. Yeah, I like Devil's Pinocchio Backbone. Pinocchio looked great, but I the story lost me. What? Of Pinocchio and Jonas. I don't know why why it went that way. I really don't. Because like <laughs> it was all over the place. It, like, okay, so Pinocchio dies and he goes back and the, the big sphinx then says <laughs> it just doesn't It was okay. so it felt kind of forced. Well, yeah, you know, the thing about it is it's like, okay, I understand what you're trying to tell. And yeah, Pinocchio was an asshole. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was um, this is true. Kid. Right, right. So, but I think we kind of added aspects to it that people weren't expecting on that. You, just, you stuck that in a Pinocchio, and it's kind of like, oh, okay. It doesn't look for me. That year was so saturated with Pinocchio. I mean, we had like three Pinocchio movies come out. Oh, yeah, because you had the right Tom Hanks one. I didn't watch that one. I've never watched that one. <laughs> never. Yeah, so. That, I mean, people were already kind of sick of it. The Garmos was the only one people were complimenting. Obviously, and I think that was just because, like, what else was there? <laughs> what other options? 
I, it, it, like I said, it was a story that lost me on it. It wasn't the the work that was put into it, which is no, one of those cases. Yeah, Maybe I should just go back and rewatch it because I can't tell you how many times I've actually rewatched something. And then liked it more the second. Because well, you know why? Because you might have expectations That's true. before That's you true. go into something. So I I like to reserve. I like to reserve the right to be wrong. You didn't like Napoleon Dynamite the first time. You this is true. I did not. And that's a joke. And, like, and and the thing about Napoleon Dynamite was it's and I cannot tell you how many times people will tell you watch it again. If you've only watched it once, like I don't get this movie you because you don't understand it. because it's hard to understand what the humor is that they're coming from exactly, because it was yeah. kind of a newer thing. So when you go back and you time. rewatch it, you because of what I thought about it, it was like home dude shaved his head because his head was hot. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then you're like, well, that was stupid. And then the more you think about it, it's like the dude shaved his head. Yeah, right, his head right. 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 I see oh, like okay. you. I got it immediately because I'm part, of, I'm part of the right generation. Okay. Well, here's the, here's the thing about your generation. It's influenced by Napoleon Dynamite. Okay, maybe. I mean, really. Because it was an awkward comedy. The thing about that, when you had these comedies that were coming at that point in time, were like teen comedies, American Pie, uh, and things like that were just kind of fuck, su- fuck subtext. Worst. Fuck subtext. Exactly. Dude stuck his dick in a pe- in a pie. That's funny. That's funny. I hate this. Or, movie or, so you got, or you got or you got or you got a a a fat guy and a skinny guy selling drugs on the side of a fucking building. Yeah. Oh, that that's funny. That's, funny. And that's what you had. But then that but now you have like this subtle uh, subtextual co- comedy. It was hard to catch on. Yeah, no, but I then when that. you think about the fact that the school bus pulls up right when the dude finally gets a shotgun to work and kills a cow in front of a school bus of kids, that's funny. That's funny. That's, that's funny. funny. Anyway, that's funny. what's funny is... I'd like to see someone argue with that. <laughs> but what's funny is, is in this composition, in the second right here where we're at, there is no lines for the uh, the school... I'm, I'm assuming it's the school marm and... Totally forgot we were talking yeah. about this. Uh, the school marm and well, we're Very talking nice. about the composition of comedy there for a second. That's okay. There we can go. do that. We're do that. We're art style kamikaze. We do what we want. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Screw you guys, you leave. <laughs> what is wrong with you? You're so anti everything. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so you got people want us to get back to this. People are begging us to get back to this. That's gonna hurt. Okay. <laughs> so, but the school marms and her kids are not in the uh, composition for the lines, only the background, right? But it frames her so well. It's like, okay, the majority of her is going to be in that big piece. That big piece. Oh, golly, I knew you were going to say that. In that one piece. Oh, come on. One piece. Come on. Come on. Let them see the shirt. No, they can't. You know, Let them see no, the shirt. You heard. You hurt my feelings. Okay. Or your heart on your sleeve. Or you know, your chest. Right there. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a picture of uh, Show of it you. Show it just right here. With the goofiest looking look. Or maybe some jam. Oh nice. Try, it. Try, some it. Jam. Try it. Try it. <laughs> okay. So we're kinda of, we're gonna go through these because now we've just wasted time. Uh we're okay. gonna go through these and we're gonna see uh so this is like the curvature of the woman's spine, her sitting on the bed, even with the weight of it. Well, the it's dolphins, it. they don't look like dolphins. Are they catfish? Maybe those are catfish. I can't tell. Or yeah, manatees. I think, I think it's catfish. It's I think fish. it's catfish. What's interesting is it's got little minnows down there. Anyway. Because this is really, what these lines are is just to direct your eyes to what's important. It's a line of action. Am I wrong? Isn't it? I mean, I, I would, okay. To some extent, for the catfish... And the woman on the bed, yes, it's a line of action. However, it's not a line of action when you look at the school mark. I guess that's true. But it's a line of focus. Mm-hmm. You know? Slow. Right. It's a line of, uh, look here, look here. This is, you know, it's like arrows pointing at, at, at something. So it, it's a line of focus. The thing about it is being able to try to compose uh panels if you're a comic artist you know because that's what i do oh it is yeah Aww, that's cute oh stuff like calico sure on arrow comics check it out anyway uh written by randy Zimmerman. anyway <laughs> so point is um so you try you want to you i'd like to try to add that into there but sometimes 
patience isn't always a virtue for me. For you? For me. Okay, so here we go. Now, here's another one. Okay, so you have a line of action. The line of action is basically just her, right? Big head. Right, but the other two lines that are in this are here. Now, where those lines cross, nothing particular is actually happening at those lines. Right? Is there? No. There's not. There's not. It's actually like right at her crotch. Like well, I mean, I guess it depends on not, how you look at it. That one line that's crossing there is at her crotch, and the other one is just above her feet. So maybe they're erogenous zones. I don't know. <laughs> right above the face. <laughs> right above the face. Come on, we've all seen a Quentin Tarantino movie, and we definitely know about what's going on with Nickelodeon. So let's not even play. <laughs> let's, let's not play stupid. Oh. All I'm saying. Someone out there. Someone out there. I don't know yet. Well, and I don't know. I don't. What's happening over here is okay. So this is kind of a complicated one, right? Yeah, well, there's a lot of lines. Okay, you have your line of action for her, kind of. I'm trying to follow this line over here. How is this? It's like same this. Thing? Yeah. It, I can see the the round. I can bit. see the hill. I can see that. I can see her line of action and everything. But I, what, what's troubling me is, I, see, that just goes to show you that you should break those lines, right? Which one are you talking about? The last one. Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, you should break those lines. Those lines are a guide. They are not a rule, right? So Trust your judgment. speaking of rules, here's another way that you can compose and maybe it might be a little bit easier for you to begin with, right? Composition may be based on letters and symbols. So nice. I remember seeing uh, Jim, 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 Jim. Jim. No, the Jim in comics. Jim. Lee. That one. Yeah, that one. He had talked about this before. Well, actually, I thought you forgot. I was just trying to make sure. I was trying to see, like, give you a chance to be intelligent. Sure. It will never happen okay, again. Dad. Okay. Sure. <laughs> uh-huh. Anyway, so you have you have letter composition, right? So the T and the Y, I think those are pretty simple. X, I think X would be hard to get. Oh yeah. Uh, I think X would be hard to get. However, he pulls it off. But however, that's not like a proper standard X, no. right? Like, right? Look, Grant Grant Lankard's in there. He's saying, "Nice hat." Thank you. Look at it. Your hat is drawing all the attention. It's like the composition of this uh, of this video. Whatever that means. Right. So, what's in the coffee mug, booze? If only she had to deal with what I had to deal with, you might want to. I can't. Medication. I can't. <laughs> it's called. It's, it's caffeine. It's a different type of drug. And so L is a pretty simple one. S, S, you know, is also considered like a line of beauty, right? Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so my spine is shaped like so. Can I do this one? Well, that's why you see them a lot in the like action line. You know the action things, the action line of action. They, why didn't you just help me out? Okay. You saw me squirming. You see that I'm freaking forty something out of years old, hilarious. and I can't keep my freaking mind straight. It's funny. But no, you can't seem to sit over here and actually help me Sorry, I'm too busy figure it out. Busting my ass laughing. You suck at word things. Not great at it either. Word things. No, 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 you're perfect, sweetheart. You're perfect. Keep up. But just put things at the end of it. And that, that you'll that be makes a, it better. Why don't you go teach English? Why don't you go teach English things? <laughs> Since you're so good at it. Look, okay, look at the damn C. That doesn't even look like a C. No, barely. Um, but it is a C. It is. But we're but but that C is not even doing what it's supposed that to do. Being all that C like so many all, that, all that C is uh it's just let us see that. Let us see that guy. See, see? <laughs> uh, uh, shut up. I know you didn't mean that. <laughs> Hello, Grant says you tell her. See, and Mike says, is there a difference between a line of beauty there. and a line of action? Uh, no, not necessarily. Does the line have feet? It's. <laughs> it's, it's a line of beauty. Uh, I would say I would say no. Uh, not necessarily. I think a lot of action, a lot of beauty is 
typically a line of action. It's just the a lot of action. Okay, you can have a line of beauty without a line of action, maybe, in the sense of your you, the way you compose something. I really would like to try to pull out a little bit of Aaron Blake's because he actually shows like there's a in his animation tutorial, he actually has a thing where he's got a guy playing a guitar and he's showing you what's taking your eye around that composition. And in that in that sense, if it's like a like it like an S like that, it's a it's a line of beauty, right? It's a sexy line. It's a sexy line. It's a sexy line. I'm gonna remember that easier. Line of beauty. It's wordy. And no, I'm great with words. Well, but line of action can also just pertain to figure inside the inside that composition. So a line of beauty is a more I think is a more broad term as opposed to line of action, which is just is what it says. It's just dealing with that action, while a line of beauty is kind of taking you in a bolder in a bolder step towards composition. Now I could be completely wrong about that. I am not an art teacher, but that's that's how I, I, I see it. That's how I understand it. Uh Jared said words are hard. Yes. Like Stop shouting. It's hurting my ears. That's why there's a volume switch. Uh and C is showing us the negative space. Negative space in my brain. <laughs> or where it should be at least. Uh so also you have uh a V which, of course, those people down at the bottom. So, like, is that a V or is that really just a fat X? <laughs> I fat mean, X. come on. Well, yeah. I think the negative space is what makes it a, a V. All things considered, it's just right down the middle. It looks more like a, like a strip of lightning. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's actually... Well, okay, so in that composition, your point is you're trying to show the people, right? That's your focus, Right. So that V is barreling down on that focus. And it has a very, um, what's the word? What is the word? Uh, nihilistic? No, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's very direct, uh, very constrained uh, viewpoint. You see, when you look, that those one, that of course is one point perspective. So it has a very uh, narrow view. Narrow view. Right. You see that a lot when they're trying to draw flying fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, uh, let's see. And it is in the uh, chat. Hello, Anna. She says college course here. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> it says B is pointing us towards the people, which is the focal point. Right. So B is like the perspective thing they made us do in art class. Which I went to art class. We, we try. Always go to art class. <laughs> we try. Yeah, no, I didn't have the attention. Yeah. We, have, we have the art we have the art class in YouTube. <laughs> that's actually done more because I'm able to like skip through it. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Yeah. Skip, skip <laughs> so, to the good part. So other letters are A, F, G, J, Q, Z. Please use a Q. I, why didn't you use Hi. a Q as okay, Loomis? How? Why did you not use a Q in this composition? I want to see how you do a Q. Just be a it's a sunset with a fish oh. jumping out of the water. Oh. Oh. What? What? Solved. 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 That is so our style. It's so our style. Oh my god, I don't understand. I could have left forever ago. Oh. And it says, luckily we had art class in high school. They make us do perspective, and V was common. Was it? Oh yes. <laughs> Jared says, hopefully there's no exam on this. There could be. It's the exam of life. You have to pass that test. If you're going to do the art life, art, art life, art, art life. What is I don't he know. doing? What is I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing gang signs. That's art, art's gang signs. That's We've got to do it now. We've got to do it now. Everybody's getting all worked up into different gangs and stuff over this whole technology shit. So now we got art life, art life. What? That's our style. You don't know. Take the L. <laughs> L as in as in life, right? As in loser. That's what you are. As, as exam would be fun. Anyway, so composition may be based on geometric forms. And again, this goes back to kind of what we were dealing with when we were doing the uh the stacking ge geographic forms, right? Stacking. Stacking 
<laughs> Jared says somewhere a crip is pissed. <laughs> As they should be. You know what we call controversy right here on our stop comic con. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's right. They're gonna do a YouTube drive by. Awesome. It's just like a drive by trolling. What do you? Call that? I'm really gonna be careful. I mean, I'm sitting right. There. Oh, <laughs> Somebody's in the check. Just sitting. Look up. There's a bunch of gun bull emojis. <laughs> oh, anyway. I, I think this one's hard for me because, you know, when you do a geographic, okay, ge geographic, when you do geographic forms, you know, like you use Africa and maybe a little bit of Dublin. I, think, <laughs> I just I, noticed what you said. I was like, yes, geographic. Just go That's what it. rocks are, Because right? geo is there. I mean, it just, it's all encompassing, right? Right. So, you know, I swear this is coffee. I swear it's coffee. And mine, hers, I can't explain. I don't know. Don't tell me. No, I wish I could. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Do we? All know. right. So geo geometric forms. Right. All right. So uh, again, <laughs> triangles. And it, I, I'm going to show you. Uh, Ethan Turner Brothers also have a thing to show us on triangles. So I, I, I kind of want to leave that one alone, real quick. Um, squares. Again. So you're telling me that this mouth is in a round square. <laughs> Uh, but see, again, these are all guidelines, right? And I don't even think that they're guidelines because I honestly think that you could probably use in the gnome, the sick gnome uh, drawing. I'm assuming it's a sick gnome. That's I'm assuming ugly. it's a sick gnome. What? It's ugly. What Which one? It? What do you think I'm talking about? This one? Yes, clearly. It kind of looks like you. You're so cruel. You can see it, right? You're so cruel. <laughs> and it says, sits and listens. Nina and uh, Jared says she's Nina's kid. She already sus. <laughs> it's him too. It's him too. Don't let him. Don't be fooled. Just because he doesn't do it on camera. Just because he doesn't do it on camera. That's right. No, I have tact. <laughs> it's not something you get from my side of the family. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> But I think that you can actually do these in in, in a different type of way too, because I mean, uh, like for instance, he could be a triangle here, the guy sitting on the stool. Obviously, that could be circles here. So I think what we're looking at when we're look, talking about geometric forms and things are stuff that helps you deal with it. It's kind of like we go back to earlier when we were talking about rock, rod, good, rod, 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 right? Right, R O G D O N, Rob Dog. I, just, I need him to say it one time. <laughs> he has. He said it many he times. He says it many times. He says, I have watched his tutorials with the sound on. <laughs> well, that doesn't work. <laughs> you no, have to I understand what, you talk, part, what he's talking about. Drawings are Even still, uh, where he talks about he didn't like the Loomis method, it didn't work for him. But I will sometimes implore the Loomis method. But if I can't get something at the right angle that That's, I want yeah, it to. It's easiest. And eventually, at that point in time, just like you said that you used it and you don't use it anymore because you, yeah. you moved past you it or time. whatever the case is. So by that point in time, after I used it, it might help me to understand the way that moves. And that's the same thing with these geometric and geographic forms. That they're going to have, you know what, maybe we should try to compose with geographic forms. Geographic forms. We'll have a little Louisiana would be a boot. I think it could think Kentucky work. is in the shape of a fried what do you chicken think leg. Kansas would be. <laughs> Not sure. Huh? What do you think Kansas would be? Arkansas. A mess. But. A pile of trash. Yes. Wow. Wow. Don't talk about the white people. <laughs> so, of course, uh, of course, circles. I think circles are pretty common. Because it's interesting, again, because look at the wine glass. You got a circle and a wine glass. I would have thought that would be kind of a triangle, right? What? How does that make sense? Well, it How does, because that's what he used. Uh, well, I'm kind of sus on whether or not that's actually what he used, but let's just say it is. Uh, again, circle. now this one, he has, uh, you have the circles to get the roundness, and then, you know, and look, he even has, like, just lines for the form. So you just kind of see this mixture of geographical forms, really? geometrical forms, geometrical. There we go. Forms. We're getting it. We're that's learning right. So you really got to have in your mind already what the image is going to look like, or else you're kind of screwed. <laughs> You've got to know what you're about to do. 
before you even put lines down, because there's no way you're going to be able to figure it out from that. You don't think so? No. No, I think you're absolutely right. We'll see here. For instance, okay, you have the chair. Although I'm not sure why the square is overlapping the triangle. Oh, well, I, I, I guess they do this. If you, if you gave me one of the unfinished, the composition alone, and told me that's a piece of pie, find the pie, and I'm, I would just sit there for hours trying to figure out where the hell is. I think that's the easiest one to find. Is it? Look at it, because I it looks mean, like yeah. a it looks like a plate with a piece of pie on it. I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty freaking simple. I guess. Come on. Mm-hmm. Let me check your coffee cup. No. I'm I'm really curious now. I'm gonna finish it really quick. So let her be able to. I smell your breath. The the really complicated one is the chief. Yeah, what's going on there? I mean, just why is that is a lot of lines, huh? So many lines. That is a lot of lines to give us what they want. So here we go. We're gonna get complicated here. Now we're getting complicated. Now we're getting complicated. Then I gotta leave. (laughs) My brain is not ready for this one. The full crumb lever principle applied to composition. Do what now? Principle. Excuse me? Principle. Who? (laughs) Rule the heavier the mass or weight, the nearer it should be placed to the middle line of your picture. Yes. What? Okay. Okay, the heavier the mass or weight. Oh, okay. The nearer it should be placed to the middle line of your picture. Sense. Okay, so basically we're trying. We're, it's, it's kind of weighted. Yeah. It's yeah. a funny word. Take any opportunity. Yes. Yeah, he said this reminds me of the episode where you went over Wally Wood's twenty-two panels that always work, where composition of the panels was discussed. Absolutely. This, I mean, this is kind of taking it to a different. That was like baby stuff. Well, you know what? Well, yes, but. Understood that Wally would probably have pretty good understanding just oh, to yeah, put definitely. those together. And the reason why he put those together is kind of a cheat guide to this. He made it a little easy. Like putting little geographical shapes into a box when you're a baby. Remember when you used to do that? Yeah. Those little geographical shapes. The little geographical shapes? Yeah. yeah, right. You know, you would have to put, let's see, New York would fit here. Mm-hmm. And you exactly. and, but so for some reason you always wanted to put Ohio and Wyoming. It just didn't exactly. work right. No. Nope. But they just look so similar, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I don't even know what they look like. I'm just so saying just, that and somebody in Ohio, Ohio watching right now Ohio is like, what's a fucking squared? Like it is weirdly geographic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That was the point. Wow. Got right over her. Somebody head. totally missed that point. <clears throat> you know what that is? That's a teacher. That's a teacher. That's a teacher yeah. in her. Um, you tell us homeschool. <laughs> yeah, because you keep saying geographical instead of geometrical. Because <laughs> you did it first. <laughs> My teacher. Yeah, because I told you. That's <laughs> why. So anyway, okay. So then the next thing, the heavy weight can be nearest or the smallest one nearest. That's it. So it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. It's like, it could be really close. Or it could be really far away. It's like, it could be either way. Okay. But you, okay. But you understand though, but it's still, it's the weight of the composition, right? It's kind of like if you have a scale, one have a, a heavier object on it, it's about where you want to put your your object line right and of course that's going to translate into distance also that goes back to overlapping right yes 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 uh each place each weight so that it appears to be in balance okay yeah uh equal weights should be should be should appear to be equal i I agree with that yeah uh but the balancing objects need not be similar. Interesting. So, okay, like the laundry and the shoe. What an odd thing to decide to pick. I know. To be. This, this is our example. I have a laundry just, bag and a shoe. What was in front of him <laughs> at the time? I'm not sure. It's just like right there. What am I supposed to? Oh, okay. Right. I'm not. I'm not quite sure what this. Is. <laughs> Interesting. So. So use formal subdivision for symmetrical composition. Okay, so here we go. Here now, here we look. Formal division applies best to subjects of a dignified or religious nature. Whoa, whoa! Let me put a lose an opinion of Andrew Loomis on uh, 
are not reflected in what the twin parts. Do we not have one of those? No. What do you mean we don't have one of those? But and it says laundry in the shoe. <laughs> Just to tell you, the, the, somebody next time you you put a composition together, somebody said, "Oh, what do you use? Oh, we use the laundry bag in the shoe composition." Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's they don't well know what known. You're talking about. Warhol use it all the time. <laughs> Picasso massacred it. Mass- massacred it because, yeah. and that I mean that in a good way, like he slayed because oh. you could slay, but then the next one is massacred, right? I thought about using like the shoe in the laundry bag. What if you put the shoe first and then the laundry bag? What if, hear me out, it was two shoes? I quit. I bow down. I, you have you have broke you have broke the secret of art. Yes, right. Um. <laughs> this is the religious stuff we were just. Talking oh about. right, it's very religious. The laundry bag and the shoe. I feel like that could be like a that could be like a. At Middle Eastern uh, proverb or oh, something. The ah, shoe. me as the laundry bag and the shoe. How are they connected? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. You can put them both in a dryer, I guess. <laughs> yes, but here's where it goes. One makes noise and the other is just clothes. So with that, would you rather be the noisy shoe or would you be the clothes? When you're inside of a dryer. <laughs> I'd probably be pretty noisy, to be honest. You know, screaming I agree, especially because you're two shoes instead of just one. Because you can't just have one. You have to have two. I'm greedy like that. Right. <laughs> so, so we start with the third. Obviously, it's the rule of thirds here on that first one. And, it, and, of course, it goes across the board, but we get more complicated, right? Here's the deal. You have an X. And that's and that's what gives you the none. In the end. As you know. As you know. Or as you know, it's got an X. It looks so like, it's none. I get what they mean by this. It kind of looks like stained glass. You know, the way oh, well, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You know, uh, in fact, it is largely the formality of design which lead, which lends some magnificence to the work of Michelangelo, Rubens, and Raphael. No, say what you Those mean. Those aren't Ninja Turtles, in case you don't know. Oh, We're talking about mind. artists. Forget what Sorry. I was going to say. Really. I just did, I, I didn't want you to be this way. Okay, okay. But they're not Ninja Turtles. I feel like that joke. But are they was, teenage? That was such know? a bad dad joke. <laughs> Well, and that depends on who you him. ask. <laughs> what I was going to say. Michelangelo was fairly jealous of Leonardo. Mm-hmm. Hence why he, he, he painted the Sistine Chapel. Is that how that happened? Pretty much. Because they were contemporaries. You know, that, you know, Raphael actually came with it. But Michelangelo and Leonardo were contemporaries. Now, Michelangelo was really more of a sculptor than he was a painter. But there was the kind turtles. of like an artistic je- jealousy there. I'm At least that's... What I huh? I'm just thinking about the turtles. I literally cannot. What Kurt? What you know? What here's else. the thing about the artist Michelangelo. He really had a Raphael personality. He was not the party dude. <laughs> that might have but, actually okay. been Leonardo. But hear me out. <laughs> Did they eat pizza? Well, they were Italian, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. No, they ate pasta. No, I don't. Know. Actually, at that point in time, I'm not sure if pasta was introduced in Italy at that point. Because pasta was actually, wow, if I'm not Italian. mistaken, I think pasta was actually discovered in China pasta. and brought to Italy. Really? Yeah, I think that's how that works. Cultural appropriation. <laughs> First example. <laughs> <laughs> Did you imagine eating spaghetti at a Chinese restaurant? <laughs> I don't think it was like that. <laughs> I think it was still low men. <laughs> but they're like, hey, we'll put some tomato sauce on it. <laughs> to rah, rah, rah. And we all have Brooklyn Whatever. <laughs> Well, you know what the Brooklyn accent actually comes from, right? Brooklyn. <laughs> no, but, but but it's because of the uh, majority of Italians that actually oh, came okay. over. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you know, well, you know, but you also have that, and that's why you still actually have that in New Orleans as well. Is that there's in New Orleans as opposed to the Cajun at Kunas? Being blocked. Huh? Being blocked by something. Uh, They're trying to cut you out, these dirty bastards. That's right. My own equipment. I know. Hi. There we go. Okay, but like in New Orleans, that's the thing too, because there's a lot of Italians that came there, so that accent is still there too. Yeah, absolutely. The mafia actually ran New Orleans there for a time. True story. I couldn't find I wasn't around. Okay, this composition is boring. Now, here's the thing that gets me. Is introducing informal subdivision. 
I have tried this. This bugs the shit out of me. What is going on? Okay. So basically... It feels like it's just... Okay, I'm just going to kind of give this a rundown. This is plan of subdivision of his own. This is Loomis, okay? This is in Loomis's head. It offers great freedom to the artist. I don't know if I will... Uh, oh, look at that. Brown dog's in there. What's up, Eric? Yo! There is an emoji. There's... Love an emoji. Absolutely. You gotta love Maybe Eric. Maybe you should check my drink. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhaustion. Oh yeah, I guess I guess that holiday's tomorrow. Oh, that that's holiday. why. Yeah, that holiday. That holiday. That holiday. Easter. The ones where the bunnies are shitting out eggs. <laughs> Just left and right. Well, at least that's what they. What we said. That's that's a whole composition of its own. Uh, so anyway, first you draw any uh, optional perpendicular line. I added the line. Part. I love that word. Do not place this at the middle of this of your composition. Because then it would be basic. It'd be very formal. Basic. This is kind of like this is like the um, equivalent of Casual Fridays composition. Casual Fridays are a lot more relaxed than whatever this is. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Well, you just throw in a line anywhere. You just kind of just throw it out there. Throw line anywhere. It's like it's like composition jazz. You just I hate jazz. Yeah. I, I don't. hate jazz. I don't hate jazz. Uh, second, draw a diagonal, diagonal one way from either side. Okay. Yeah, that one, that makes sense to me. I understand. And then at intersection, draw horizontal. Oh, shit. I've been doing this the wrong way. What? Yeah. No, I totally get this. Oh, no. Uh, okay. So you got your composition, you draw a line, then you draw the diagonal from somewhere. And now you draw another, okay. This looks like a cracked phone screen. How are you understanding this? I, I wasn't until just now. <laughs> Didn't I say that? Hey, Dennis, welcome to the show. Dennis said, I tried this before. It was okay. I think it's mainly to get your brain to think outside the box if you're stumped. Yeah, I, I, I get. I think. I think so. I can imagine that because at this point, at some point in time, you start using this type of thing, What's and it just in? you just kind of go. Yeah, I mean that's what you're doing, like Kim Jong E, G, 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 Kim Jong G, 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 No, it's G. G. Yeah, you draw like a G, trying to be a G. <laughs> like a G, like a G, like a G. Hey. No, stop it. Stop Our it. Style. Stop it, no. <laughs> so, so yeah, you draw now. Draw a single diagonal to any rectangle produced, like this or this, not this. So you don't want an X, but there's an X. I don't understand that. Now draw a new horizontal at any intersection. Draw in, uh, draw new perpendiculars at any intersection, and then now add more new. <laughs> God, what he just hurts my head. Jeez. Kim Jong Ji. Yes, G. Like What's funny about this is, in all honesty, you keep writing it out. Doesn't mean I know how to pronounce it. Yeah, exactly. That was the problem. <laughs> a, I've heard it, G, because uh, Modern Day James. You know Modern Day James? He does art tutorials too. Modern Day James had a whole. Uh, well, series tutorial, huh? Well, it's an old -timey James. Oh, okay. So you haven't you haven't seen futuristic James either. No, then no. I'm thinking, okay, well, modern day James did a whole tutorial where it's like draw like a G. That was the name. That was the name of it. Uh, and so he was trying to train himself to draw like Kim Jong Ji. Uh, sounds very, very dad pun like. I don't come on here to be insulted. It's just a why perk. Do I, why do you keep taking a new one? And it's just a perk. I should just let you do it. <laughs> I should just go let you do it by yourself next time. Let's not do that. You know what? Add more new diagonals or perpendiculars as you choose, as new spaces are created. By this kind of division, no two spaces oh, no. are duplicates. Remember not to... See, he's got some really... Hit. It's like, I want to say motto. Remember to motto. So my uh, Mike says, I love Kim Jong Ji. I miss him absolutely. It was, it was a shock when he passed. I think it was last year or year before last. How old is he? Not old at all. Who is it from? 
I, I think it was an aneurysm, if I'm not mistaken, or, or a heart attack. I'm not positive. But, well, it's just like we keep losing, like, like Tori Amelie this year. It was a heart attack. I think it was a heart attack? Yeah, he was, like, he was 46 or 47. Yeah, he was. Why are artists really so young. stressed out? Yeah. Calm down. Because you're trying to use this compositional lines. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, diagonal here. here. Diagonal here. Diagonal here. Anyway, build in your subject as adhering as much as possible to the structural lines you have created. Don't give up. See, he even gives you, yeah, okay, Jerry said it was a heart attack. Uh, see, but even 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 Loomis realizes at the end of all this, he's like, don't give up, because at this point in time, halfway through this, he's like, I can't believe you're doing this shit. And here's a demonstration of it. With the little weird okay, elf people. So he invented this method, right? I or guess. That's explained? what he says. So yeah. what you're telling me is he made it all up. Well, yeah, yeah, well, here's the deal, but it's but of course, obviously, it's based on principles that yeah, he's he already understood, right? You get bored with using why all the time, and then the cue was just not working for him, so. But basically, what I'm saying is he made it all up, right? And said, so now here's some figure compositions based on informal subdivision. So it's almost like, okay, here are these lines, and these lines are just kind of a guide for you to, to visualize what you want to do. Hey, look, it's still hitting with the snakes. Fine. So now we kind of understand. So there you have the overlapping. Hell, except he added a bowl. I don't think the bowl was there to begin with. Spiced it up. So again, he says, informal subdivision is purely creative, not mechanical. So let's make thumbnails. The divisions here suggested the, the subjects and arrangements. So it, it's basically, it's to give you a, a freestyle, um, formal, informal, uh, Viewpoint, right? Yes. Okay. So here's the deal. Let's let's look at this. Let's see here. All right. We have compositions using triangles. All right. I can't see it on the screen. Let me pull it up on mine. And uh, let me drop this behind there so we're not distracted. Buy it. All right, excellent. So, okay, so this is going to be kind of a little more played down, right? Okay. Uh, but I, it's still going to, it, it still has some of those elements that we were looking at as far as what we were looking at in, in Lewis methods. So, here's the deal. And I'm winging this, mind you. I'm just going I feel like the last guy the was too. <laughs> just dangle here, dangle here, wherever, man. Just do it, just do it. It's like that. That's when we see Lewis was starting to discover marijuana, and <laughs> he was just going for it, huh? Water. All right, let me pull this off of your screen so I can see it. All right, so here's what we're looking at. Of course, this is a, like as always. I always like to go back to the Ethernton brothers. These guys put this stuff out there for free. Uh, which is funny to me because you kind of go, oh, it's free. Nobody's paying for it. Yet these guys, every time they have a Kickstarter, are hitting millions of dollars for these books. I have four of them. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get – they have a Kickstarter out right now for all their books. Unfortunately, I need five, and the way that they have it set up, I can't afford to get five, six, and seven. But they have a Kickstarter out for seven. They, I haven't checked out their how to – Write how to think while you write, which I think would be pretty interesting to a, check out. It's not, it's a writing book for comics, yes, or, just or oh, just in general writing. I think that's interesting, yeah. So it's not an art book. Well, no, this what they have out, they have these, these are free tutorials that you can pick up right now at the Ethington Brothers Block Spot. Mm -hmm. Block Spot. Well, these are these are art. Uh, do I still have it? I don't have it out there anymore. These have pictures, yeah, these but are. they're writing books. But there is a writing one too. But they, well, no, it's not about pictures on the writing one. So. I don't want it. <laughs> well, maybe when you decide to start writing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we're going to break this down. So maybe you don't have to use so many diagonals and informal designs. So what you have are comp composition with triangles, right? I saw that before. Okay, so if you could see. Uh, unfortunately, on this, I can't pull up. I, you know what? Hold on. Let me do this. Because I can't pull up 
any closer on that image. That's an overlay here on StreamYard. But I want you guys to capture this well. So stick with me and let me see if I can't get this window captured better. Whoa! Oh my gosh. The world has just changed. What on earth? No, that's not it. Do, 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 do. Ah, here we go. Right? Right? It's blank. No, it's blank. There's nothing there. That's because I have to pull it up. This is really what the inside of the brain looks like. This is, yeah, I know. And there, is, there is a toolbar on the side, too. Mm. I don't use it. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Just hang out of there. Don't run, guys. I'm like, what the hell is this shit? What is this guy doing? What a joke. No, they're, they're not saying anything. They're left already. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> the pressure's off. Yeah, exactly. You can go back to just staring at this. Just staring at it. All right. Here we go. I have no idea what I just moved. <laughs> All right. Got my legs crossed. Got my... All right, so here we go. Composition using triangles. Yay. This is why I need a producer <laughs> or, you know, an engineer, not necessarily a producer. Okay. So here we are. Oh my gosh. Where's my face? You got to see how pretty I am. Uh, so here we are. Okay. So we got composition using triangles, right? What's the difference between using triangles and squares? Well, this comp, this, the difference is this one's talking about triangles. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's what we're going to do. Little... We're going to talk about triangles. Because I pulled this one up that says about triangles. All right. You don't use whatever Picking you want to use. It. Okay. Well, look. Here's the deal with triangles, right? Go ahead and use a square to get that that those arms right. Go ahead. I dare you. Okay. Yeah. It might be broken, but. Well, you know that guy that you used to like all the time? The a animator, Ethan Becker? I do remember him. Okay. You know, he's, he's really mean. Yes. And people got upset because he was mean, but I'm like, fucking right, he needs to be mean. Yeah, that guy. So anyway. His persona was mad sometimes. He's always, he had the microphone always on like a knife or whatever the case is. That, that was, was like, his thing. Was, was that was, that was exactly his thing. Insulted. Right. <laughs> Any comics network says, pay me, I pay you with my presence. Uh, he thinks he's that special. Oh, cool. Ephraim's and Machu Picchu. Nice. He says, hello. Machu Picchu. I thought that was a Pokemon. No, that's... Wow. <laughs> hey, this is your daughter that's going to get you canceled. Anyway. It's, a, it's an offensive. I don't because know. Because it is. It is Pokemon. It's, it, no, it's not. It's it? Pikachu. No. I should know. Before I wear it Pikachu. evolves into Pikachu, it's, it's Pikachu. Raichu. Raichu is the last one. Yeah. Look, I'm probably the only one who's finished at least three Pokemon games. For the most part. And the series. I watched some of it. Yeah. It was so Pichu. love it. Pichu. 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 Okay, can we stop? We're talking about triangles now. <laughs> yes, sorry. All right. Anyway. It's a fault. Triangles are a simple, diverse, and remarkable layout device. Many key elements are arranged over triangle over triangular foundations. And in fact, Ethan Becker or Evan Becker. I think it is Ethan. It's Ethan. Okay. Sure. And if you go go check out his YouTube too, Ethan Becker. Has a YouTube. He does. That's He's a professional. Un that's under Ethan Becker. Brown Dog says, you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> I like the emojis. It's like a little sandwich. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Okay. So, here's the deal. You look at these. Okay. So, you kind of look at the, uh, the one, two, three here. And it's showing you the breakdown of these triangles, right? Or how you can use these triangles. It's a layout device. Many key elements are arranged all over the triangle foundation. Ethan Becker talks about using that to get to capture those poses that are really hard that you can't capture. And I have done this. And as long as I can remember this, it helps to capture those poses. Um, especially hands on the hip. Oh. That crap is so aggravating to get sometimes, right? Oh and somebody's going to be in there, oh, I don't have any problem getting it. Well, you know what? You're awesome. <laughs> You're just awesome. Okay, well, my bad. I suck. So sorry. That you're sorry, awesome. your highness. 
Ifra says those books are jewels. They absolutely are. We, as artists coming up in this atmosphere, in this community, yeah, there's a lot of bullshit, guys, but there's a lot of great things. Let's just focus on the great things, like people who are absolutely out there willing to share their talent so that they can see more. And the thing that I always like to think about it, Jaden, is that I want pe- whatever I learn, I want people to know. I don't want to hold it on to myself. Why? Because one, I want to be inspired by other people's artwork. And two, I want to read things that I enjoy. And right now, I'm not getting a lot of that out of, out of a certain place that's so in the that West. your stuff will inspire someone else to make. Or even just, so not necessarily even my stuff for that matter, but just how I come up with my stuff might inspire somebody. And they can go, you suck. I got a better way to do this. And that's fine, as long as you do. You know, because I'm coming after you if you say that. Oh, that's <laughs> a threat. That's not a threat. That's Record. a promise. Well, you know what I say to that? I'm getting that's to that a, shit. It's all mine. Y'all don't get to know. I'm not telling you how I do what I do. It's not leaving the dumb. Y'all don't get to know. It's because you're scared. Jane. Scared of what? You're just so scared. Scared? It's not your fault. Oh, scared? It's not your fault. Scared of how crazy talented Jaden, I am. Jaden. Without even Jaden. Having Jaden, to Jaden. Jaden. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? I feel like I'm about to wake up from a coma. <laughs> Somebody out there gets that. Anyway, triangles. It's from Goodwill Hunting. Oh, come on. Kyle, get some text. Uh, triangles have a completeness which is satisfying to the eye. They link elements, draw focus, and create an endless visual loop. Remember that when I was talking about earlier with Aaron Blaze, who did, he directed Brother Bear from Disney. He uh, he, he, he did a lot of the, I, he didn't do Puma. That was, uh, I, I can't remember his name either. He does stuff on 21 Draw. But Bancroft, that's Bancroft did Puma. I've never seen he did Nyla. If I'm not mistaken, I think Aaron Blaze did Nyla. In, uh, thanks. Look, see? High Five Studios knows it. That's what I'm talking about. High, man, that's a hell of a high five. I love that. I do. See, High Five knows Good Will Hunting. Absolutely. One of my favorite movies. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. I saw that when I was in high school. So how is your life bringing you a sense of peace? It right now it's triangular. It's triangular. So that's why I'm going to do that. Uh, you know what that is? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, don't <laughs> don't ask questions. You see that? Anyway, so yeah, look, see, all right, that's what I'm talking about. Look, you're giving me a high five. That's what High Five Studios is all about, baby. Oh, one. Oh wow. Right here. <laughs> but you didn't hop out the camera. That's why. Five you in the face. You, you know, like, I see, it's so like, contrary. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Anyway, so points the way. See? The triangles point the way. So here are five quick ways to implement triangles into your layouts. So you have the endless loop. That's what Aaron Blaze was talking about, that composition. It's kind of like your line of views we were talking about, in a way. Uh, so... That, uh, with that, you know, I, I got the, the hands going because I'm trying to keep my, that's how I keep my brain moving, you see? Um, so, like point, so here are five quick ways to implement triangles into your layouts. Points the way, key elements located at corners, kind of like your uh, rule of thirds, right? And then, of course, you have your negative space. I really want to understand negative space better. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So, uh, because that, that means you get to draw less. Absolutely. Uh, then you have framing, obviously. Like, the, okay, so that's just like a guy in a cave, right? Just basic, basically, just a, a guy in a cave is framed into that. And it's not, and it's a little rounded out. So it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have to be so triangle. And then I don't understand that one. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> so, so character designs feel more iconic if features are placed along or at the point of triangular underpinnings. Huh. I never thought about that. Like, okay. What the hell? I don't know what's happening over there. There's some stuff in there. Anyway. So you have the... uh. 
the triangles are kind of helping you get an idea for your character design. So, right? I don't know how I would use that, really. I, are you trying? Well, look, okay, I'm looking at you. Right? So, yeah, you see, you totally are. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. All right, now, give it a good face look. All right, but see, you are. See, now, if that hat was in the right way and the ears were coming up, that could be your two points for your triangle and coming down. There you go. Oh, look. Sideways. That's it. That's a character design right there. You've done it. You've yeah, I feel like this it. is copyrighted. This is oh. taken Thank you, Mike. Uh, so, also, so important, you don't always need all three corners of the triangle to be contained within the frame. So, okay, so that's part B. I totally skipped that, right? There is really no rule on how you use triangles within your compositions. Well, what are we doing here? I'm done. I mean, why Why even do this? You're just telling me to have triangles? Oh, God. And that's it? I mean, really. I mean, really. So there's no, okay, so let, 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 i tell you what, let's wait. Let's see what happens. There is really no rule on how you use triangles within your compositions. Okay, no matter what you do, their inclusion always adds strength to your layout. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? Because you have, you have, it's, uh, it's again, it's that considering uh, that loop, right? That, that goes all the way around. So it's, it's an ever connecting loop. Uh, and then you have important, you don't, Always need all three contours. I'm sorry, all three corners of the triangle to be within the frame. That's a good point too. So damn, I wish I would have thought of that stuff. Does it stop being a triangle? Then, then it becomes a core. Uh, Does it become like an X about it? Is, <laughs> what? Wow, are you questioning the Etherington brothers? Maybe. Yeah, okay. Well, we got some answering to do. <laughs> you got some explaining to do. You got some explaining to do. You don't even know if that's from. I Stop. get it. You, can't, you don't even know Goodwill Hunting. Okay, no, I don't know that one. What's the connection? To what? The, you, you got some explaining to do? What's the connection? Oh, she, you got some explaining. I can't do the accent. All I know but... is that Fairly Odd Parents used to did a, do a reference to it one time. Oh, really? It was I Love Lucy. I know. You don't know what I Love Lucy I know. Is. Dude, I grew up with you. You used to put on that like, garbage all the time. I didn't know. I, I was shit. never an Isle of Lucy watcher. You were? Not even no. once? I've seen the great episode. Too all look the same. How can I bleed together? Fair enough. Anyway, <laughs> character poses are the perfect place to implement the triangle for a dynamic, bold attitude. See, look. Hand on the uh, hip. That's what I'm talking about. So a fun exercise is to randomly divide your entire page up into triangles and then use those to dictate the design. Just let your imagination go. Totally going to try to do that. Tell me to just do whatever I want. That's it. So, I'm happy now. <laughs> I've been doing it right this That's whole not time. what they mean, because I feel like you're taking Dude, that the wrong way. I've had it right this entire time. I feel like you're taking that the wrong no, way. No, no, this is what they wanted, right? They're not telling me it's not. <laughs> Point taken. So anyway, so here's another one that we're going to go over real quick. It's getting late and I'm wearing down. Two line composition. Now, like I said earlier, Alan said I, when I made the statement on uh, this morning on Sketchy Saturday, which of course you can always go back and check out. We had a pretty interesting conversation this morning, especially about mood boards and things like that. Daphne Lage, Mark Dudley, also on there, but uh, but also. Um, when I made the statement about the rule of thirds, she's, she made a joke about, oh, is there a rule of twos? Well, kind of there is, because here we go. It's a two-line composition. Without a doubt, one of the simplest, fastest, and most powerful composition structures to give your art a bold, striking layout, striking layout, is to base your drawing around two lines. I know you didn't see that coming. These two lines can be straight or curved. They can cross or be separate. It works no matter the shape of your frame. If you want to have gay lines. If, 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 if. Representation matters. Wow. Really? It does. Really? Ask Twitter. Really? I feel like that's not what they mean. No. I really feel like that's not what they mean. That's what it means. I really feel like. I, I really feel you look hard enough, you can find relationships in any shape. 
They're just really close. Come on. Come on. It's not funny. It's beautiful. Oh my God. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Don't don't flash the thing. How have you I'm, been? <laughs> you look good. I'm feeling neurotic. I've been feeling a little neurotic lately. <laughs> Ready for this. That's probably already taken by an indie comic book or a terrible tequila. One right after the other. That's right. That's what you do to me. <laughs> anyway, so these two lines can be straight or curved. They can cross or be separate. It works no matter the shape of your frame. Separate. Stop what? talking about this. Stop. So you don't need to run every detail of your image along the two lines. And we saw that, right? When we were looking at Loomis earlier on, right? We saw that he used these compositional lines, but not necessarily those lines weren't necessarily what uh, added to the whole thing. Yes. Absolutely. Right. So you don't need to run every detail of your image along the two lines, but by placing the key focus items, figures, topography along your two lines, you'll achieve a very readable, iconic design. And, what, and here's what's great. You use those two lines and add some triangles in there. Boom! Yeah, we figured it out. Boom! Composition no, explosion. Triangles are already kind of lines. Composition explosion. Composition explosion? Yes, but there's three lines. Mm. Mm. So, <laughs> you have your icon of design. Now, spatial composition is all about arrangements of objects on the page. These objects naturally divide up the space as we place them in our drawings. Now, the two-line approach works so well in part because it divides the space in a clean, immediate way. Immediate. Immediate. It's like right there. It's in your face. we got to get it out of the way. It's right there. Why are we in such a rush? Wow. It's composition, baby. It's composition. Composition explosion. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That was not our style. That was our style. That was not our style. Also, I cannot get back on screen. Huh? My chair is all jagged and I can't get on screen. That's not our style at all. Uh, look, you unfocused. No, I mean, just... Camera's like, I can't even with you. I can't even with you. Camera's all like, I can't even with you. I don't even know what you're saying. It's 21 Pilots. That's why. And you can only <laughs> you can use two lines not only to divide space, but also to build objects, environments, poses, and characters. Yeah, they do this a lot, actually, especially when it comes to vehicles. This is stuff that you would have to really practice to put it on there. Something I never do. Yeah. The Hot Five Studio says, solid tips here for beginners and pros. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, Athington Brothers always brings it. So, you know, like I said, always check it out. There is a B to this. There's a B? There's a B. There's a B? There's a B. Don't go with it. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. I gotta find it now. Hold on, because this is not how. Ah, here we go. All right. So two line composition, part B. All right. So. Hello. <laughs> two line composition. Where'd you go? Surprise. Two line composition. Approach can be used on almost anything, but it is particularly useful for planning your environmental layouts. Yeah, that's good. Here's a here's a set yes. of different ways to implement this idea to give you some inspiration for your own designs. Look, it's a V. And it's a triangle. It's a triangle. See it? I see the triangle. No, I see it. And look, brown dogs got triangles all over the place. Oh God, brown dog, calm down. <laughs> And so I'm going to go through these quickly because we're about to wrap this up. So anyway, uh, so then you have curved, it's a curved triangles, usually called curved triangles. Really? Uh, no. Uh, I'm just making stuff up now. That, and then you have the, the path. Because that's another compositional thing too that you, there's so much that you can use here is a pathway is to, to, to bring out your focal point. And that's kind of what your focal point I here being a carrot so from one right. piece. And what? And anyway, so you have the the line that goes up like that. See, it's, it's a pathway. So that's part of a compositional frame. Same thing here. It's a pathway to help you see your focal point there. What? <laughs> I, you know, when the thing about these type of things, I've tried this stuff, and I think I get too complicated with my lines. I think it's very easy to get complicated with your lines. And then you do that. 
and it complicates the whole thing. You lose focus on it. Yeah. So maybe if you just dumb down. <laughs> this is the this is as dumb as it gets. Just some lines. Just some lines, just right? Some lines. Well, if I dumb it down some more, maybe it will work better. I, I think it's funny that this line has like a thick and thin mm. on them. So it would definitely it would definitely help to make it more readable. And that's not exactly how I thought that composition was going to go. Like, if you look at that composition right there, before we get to the lines, right, I'm thinking, okay, so this is going to be one line here and there's some squiggly lines yeah. here. No, that's not it at all. In fact, we're more focused on the negative space with that. So that's interesting. Oh, what about this? What? The Twin Towers. Stop! I'm sorry. What the hell is wrong with your generation? I don't know. We weren't there, so it's like... Yeah. We didn't make Pearl Harbor jokes. Did. Y'all are demented. Huh? Yeah, joke missed an opportunity. It's not my fault. Sorry. It is your fault. We're talking about your generation. And then, of course, okay, this makes sense. You have your pathway. I have used this before. I try to use it in a calico shard, which is also available from Arrow Comics by Randy Zimmerman. Uh, <laughs> Go buy his things and show up. <laughs> anyway. But then, of course, and then, of course, last but not least, See, so these examples show quite literal interpretations of the lines, but of course the effect can be far more subtle. And we see that we just blown all that out of proportion. I mean, basically. So, with that being said, Jaden, I'm going to disappear. There you are. So, Jaden, so now that we've done that, what, how do you feel about your confidence in composition i have none <laughs> i actually lost confidence as this went on it's kind of it's kind of incredible oh look wow a show where he knows what he's talking about he's not just a pretty face by god no the pretty face pretty face shows at thursday mm -hmm. 8 p.m eastern what do you do there you just stare at the camera i'm just gonna stare at chad that's all this good oh at him specifically at him specifically okay. Look, there's a heart. Oh. oh, and a curved triangle. Oh, look at him. I love it when your boyfriend shows up. And he, of course, again, it's Ethan Twin Brothers. But if you check out earlier, if you're just coming into the show now, when it publishes, guys, go back and check it out. If you got comments, leave a comment. We like to talk to you even after the show. Uh, check it out because we did go over some of Loomis's compositions too. So some some of it were complicated. Some of it was quite easy to think and consider. So, Jaden. Yep. I don't even really want to know where to find you. No, you don't. It's bad enough that you Under live down bed. the hall from me. <laughs> Mike says this was a good show. Thank you, Mike. Jaden, where can they find you? Probably hanging with your mama. You might be. Aren't you supposed to go swim right over there? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that off. Okay. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Facebook. I'm doing stuff with Daphne Lage right now. Got some stuff out. Uh, did stuff for Snowfall. Did a cover. Did a print. Uh, available what, on Backer Kit. What can we, if we want to, kit, if we want to see you, I need to write this down. If we want to see more of your art, where will we go? Um, nowhere. Daphne. Daphne. <laughs> She's taking all my time. I don't know. I wish I could post. More. Well, if you'd like to see more of my art, you can always check out Landing Art at L A N N I N G Art dot com. And of course, follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to build up a following over there. Who knows what that's going to turn into because threads is not working out. Oh, uh, oh as always, uh, check out. I've got some stuff coming up. Uh, Captain Save a Hope from Dr. Flaw Comics. Uh, I think there's a Doghouse 2 coming out soon. And who knows what else is going to be in the works. Oh, uh, there's also a little something coming up Thursday, if I haven't mentioned it. Uh, really, what is it? Really random. Well, Random ramblings of various persuasions. So check that, that out. We're, yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about comics. And we're not going to talk about art unless they come Hi. up. Right. And then, of course, Wednesday night when we have a whole group of people, I think Carissa, Grant, and, and Lori, Lori. Lori Capitori will be here. We'll be watching Fantastic Four 1994, the Roger Corman one, which was never meant to be released. Keep that in mind. Yeah, so is... we're going to Mystery Science Theater this bitch Wednesday at... Uh, a time. We'll put up a card later. At a time. We'll put up a card later. <laughs> Again, as always, next week we'll do Art Style Kamikaze, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and over some of the artwork of your mortal enemy, Chris Pachalo, the guy you want to punch in the face because he's so good, and uh, I really want to learn how he spots those blacks. So, anyway, with that, I can't say that anymore. We're, no, that's, that's
that's not what that means. Jeez. Anyway, with that, till next week. Later. Bye. Wait, I hope that's right. Did we do it? I don't know.